My name is Mike. I'm Jeff. And uh, we're here with the Nerds Lunch Podcast, and I hope you can tell by the non-copyrighted version of the Star Wars theme that uh, we're going to be talking lots of Star Wars today. Yay! Um, Jeff, what are you having for lunch? Uh, I'm having a, uh, a roast uh, sliced up on a piece of bread with some cheese and a uh, sesame sauce. And it looks really good. It's so much better than my McChicken and large fries from McDonald's. <laughs> Uh, but I didn't have time to make my lunch today. But you guys didn't tune in to hear about our lunch, but we told you we'd always tell you what we're eating. Mm -hmm. And so if you hear us chewing in the background, that's why. But we're here to talk about Star Wars. So our first topic today is the new animated series, Star Wars Resistance. And we were lucky enough to get the first three episodes. Um, I know that only the first episode's been released, so we're not going to spoil the crap out of anything for you. But uh, Jeff, you watched the first three episodes. Mm -hmm. I want to get your initial thoughts. Where do you think it's going? Sure. Um, I'm going to just initially preface this again with um, what I thought of Rebels. Yeah. Uh, I thought it was solid. Uh, I, there's definitely some parts that were targeted at a younger, younger audience. Uh, there were also ones that were, you know, you could tell they put in more for the like older Star Wars fans and stuff like that. It's de I definitely found it a bit of a mixed bag. I enjoyed it overall. Didn't love it. Uh, I'm getting similar vibes from Resistance where there's some, you know, I do like some of the stuff in it. You can definitely tell there is some targeting at children. Not that that's a bad thing or anything. Like, when I was younger, this would, the whole thing would have been like, oh, my God, this is amazing. Star Wars show. Well, and I, I, I think, sorry to cut you off, but mm -hmm. I think that's one of the things that we watch Star Wars as kids. And I think if they don't do stuff like this, there won't be people our age in 20 years watching Star Wars. Absolutely. And that's why I think that's a great thing. You know, whether or not it's targeted directly at me, they definitely try and throw in stuff for, like, the older audience in these. Mm -hmm. Am I going to watch the entire thing, all the episodes? I don't know. We'll see. You might skim through a couple. Yeah, like there's probably going to be those ones, like the ones that have cool backstory or fill out things. And I'm like, oh, I got to go watch that. Like I remember in Rebels, there was one or two, like was there one where they hijacked a uh, uh, a comm ship or something like that and caused like a battle. Oh, yeah. You know, I heard, I read about that one. I'm like, I'm just going to skip on that one because it's just, it, you know, it just wasn't my quite my, my one. But overall, um, not huge on the main character thus far in, in Resistance. Though you could definitely tell... Um, how they're trying to set him up to be a more heroic, likable character in the future. So, I mean, you can't entirely judge based off just that, but it, at this stage, I don't I don't really like the main character that much. The supporting cast is... What is, about Jaeger, his mentor? I like Jaeger. Uh, I think he's probably my favorite, though I did also like the green guy. Uh, yeah, Niku. Niku. Uh, yeah, it was, it's one of those, like, it's kind of a fine line between being kind of a little too ridiculous <laughs> um, with that sort of thing and being but, good. And I, honestly, I just enjoyed it. And so, kids are going to love it. Yeah, and it was it was to the point, for whatever reason, no, I, I actually quite liked him. I thought they hit the right tones with that. Um, I did like his um, his boss, though, our Jaeger. Yeah. Um, I like the fact that they said he was in the Jakku War. Yep. He was in the... Uh, um, a Battle of Endor. Yeah. I like the way that they set that up, that he's a grizzled war veteran. And, you know, they have to hint at, you know, some other things about his, his story in the, the episodes as well. Uh, I like that they'll, they'll have lots of room to flesh out on him. I like he's kind of the, the grizzled old, been around. He seems like a good mentor character. I, I do like him. He's a little more grounded, I think, too. Um, so I, I like him. Um, but overall, you're probably going to feel the same way as Rebels unless it gets super good. I think so, yeah. You know, It'll like, it's one much... of, I'm glad it's there because I like that it fleshes out the backstory. I like, you know, the fact that it is, the, a lot of it is targeted kids. That's great because, again, that that's a good thing. You want stuff for all ages and, and, and stuff like that. And being able to also have it appeal to an older audience is fantastic. When I first saw this and I saw the trailer, I thought, oh, this is a real kid's show. They're finally doing a, just a kid's show. Mm -hmm. But some of the little hints they gave us in these first three episodes, like the fact that his dad is on Hosnian Prime. Mm -hmm. And Hosnian Prime, we know this takes place six months before The Force Awakens, so Hosnian Prime gets destroyed in six months. Does Spoiler his, alert! Yeah, does, <laughs> does his dad die? And if so, what kind of character arc will that take this young, mm -hmm. impressionable kid to having to become a grown-up real fast? Mm -hmm. And, you know, he thinks he's a spy right now, and it's all this aloof, oh, I'm a spy, guess yeah. what, I'm a yeah. spy. But will he really start to understand how serious this resistance is 
if, in fact, his dad dies. I don't know if that'll happen. But I, I didn't pick that up until you pointed that out, and it's like, that's that's a good point. So it's going to be more of a, yeah, the, right now it's kind of all for fun for him, you know, yes. and it's going to be a much more serious hit, you know, it, like this is real life and stuff like that. I'm sure there'll be other instances of that as well. But that'll be interesting if they do go that route, which I wouldn't be surprised, especially if he doesn't have a chance to resolve things with his father first, because right. that would probably leave a lot of, you can never really make up for that or get that back. So, or maybe they'll reconcile immediately before, and then the next scene, Hogging Prime blows up. So segueing into this, um, Kathleen Kennedy got her contract renewed for three more years. Mm-hmm. Um, and sh- as a producer, so she is the producer of all things Star Wars, especially the movie. She kind of lets the TV stuff go to other producers, like uh, the we'll talk about in a minute, the Mandalorian live action TV shows, John Favreau, Dave Filoni kind of runs the animation department, and Kathleen Kennedy kind of really produces the movies. So if you look at the track record of all the movies, with the exception of Solo, um, they've made tons of money, and that's mm-hmm. a producer's job. Yeah, I mean, she also did Indiana Jones. I could list off the mm-hmm. number of successful franchises she's been the producer of. Yeah. And yet online, everybody says, oh, this sucks. It's a bad move. Kathleen Kennedy's no good because they hate The Last Jedi, because they hate Solo. But Bob Iger came out and said, Solo was my fault. I should have moved it to December. Kathleen Kennedy told me to move it to December. I didn't listen to her, and I put it up against my own franchise, which was Infinity War, which nobody could go against. That blew my mind when they did, like, had it around the same time. And there was a lot of big movies around that time, wasn't there? Oh, yeah, like, Deadpool uh, came out, yeah. all within three weeks. Like, or similar similar ones that similar audiences would appeal, would be, appeal to them. And, stuff and, like and of course, Kathleen Kennedy did not say it was Bob Iger's fault. She didn't say anything. Mm-hmm. She's a good toe-the-line, and that's why I think she got her contract renewed for three more years. But also... The divisiveness between The Last Jedi, um, I don't think that uh, the divisiveness was fair. And I know you really wanted to talk about that. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's okay. Sabrina just got here with my lunch. Hooray! Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> don't mind the paper bag sounds. Um, That's me unwrapping my McChicken. And I think with Captain Kennedy, it's interesting that if you if you took The Last Jedi out of the equation, how would people view her? Like, the Solo was, you know, had it had its issues, for sure. Yeah. Uh, though, again, I think released around now, I think it would have done fine. Like, it wasn't an amazing movie. It was a solid movie. And it, I, I, it would, I would have been done better now, though. I, I would argue, though, too, that I don't... Like, I know personally, when I first heard they're making a solo movie, thought, my thought was kind of like, well, why? You know, there was one iconic actor who does it. I don't think it was necessarily a movie that needed to be made, which you could put somewhat on her doorstep, because she did greenlight it. Yeah. Uh, I don't know all the backstory of that. So, like, there are things that she's done that I, I disagree with. I think, it, they, yeah, they definitely could have made things work out better by having different release dates and all this sort of stuff. And you could argue that the director that was there that got let go, they, maybe they weren't watching closely enough when the way it was going. You know, there's definitely Lord things you could, you could point out. Um, but with the backlash part, I think that's a big part is with The Last Jedi. Like, if you took The Last Jedi out of the equation, I think the Solo thing would have been like, oh, that's unfortunate. But I don't think it would have been nearly as big of a deal. And I think a lot of that is because of how people have viewed The Last Jedi. And it's... I agree with you 100%. You know? Um, and it, so you kind of have to separate what it, to what is hers, like what bad things she's actually done versus the good and what was actually her as opposed to, you know, other people. And just for your knowledge, both... Jeff and I really like The Last Jedi. It's true. I, I do understand why a lot of people disliked it. I would not say it's a perfect movie. It had its issues. Yeah. But the overall, I really enjoyed it. Um, but there's that point where, I always say this, J.J. Abrams screwed Ryan Johnson by putting Luke on an island and saying that he had distanced himself from everyone. Because Ray can't just show up, hand him the lightsaber, and he goes, oh, I'm back. Yeah. Otherwise, that would have been a MacGuffin. Yeah. Why was he there? So Ryan Johnson had to come up with something. Yeah. And what he came up with, I was really happy with. I thought Mark Hamill did an excellent job acting. Mm-hmm. It. Agreed. Uh, I, yeah, I think Mark Hamill was amazing in there being that, like, and, you know, and is, wouldn't he, I find it funny that one of the arguments I've seen people say is there's no character development in for in there. But I'm like, so did I watch much. the same movie? Because, like, so many of the characters, like, especially Luke. Yeah. Because he started at such a low point, and by the end, he's, you know... Spoiler alert. Yeah. Spoiler alert. If you haven't seen The Last Jedi, though, you shouldn't be yes. listening to this podcast. Uh, he sacrifices himself to, you know, save the rest of them. And I get that it's not in the way a lot of people wanted. I was disappointed when I came out that he didn't have more of a big, 
even as much as I enjoyed what they did, I, I was still disappointed, and I totally understand people feeling like. Well, I wanted to see Luke with a green lightsaber, just kick, kick an ass, ass. Take it, and I, and I understand why that's very disappointing for people. If that's what they wanted, and they didn't give people what, in a lot of ways, what they wanted. I like the movie that they made for you know the, the way they did it, but you could say, well, should Kathleen of Kennedy have maybe targeted this more? You know, should they not have taken as many risks? Mm-hmm. Ironically, with the first movie, uh, Force Unleashed or Force, Force Awakens, Awakens. Right? Um, people said, oh, it's too much to like the old movies. Right. And then the next one, they went completely off in another direction, and then that was too far the other way. Uh, again, it's, how much of that is Kathleen Kennedy's fault, I guess? But um, again, I don't even think it's anybody's fault, because I think Star Wars fans are getting way too caught up in their fan fiction of what they want to see and not just going to see these movies and enjoy them for being great Star Wars movies. Yeah, uh, and I mean, I think there's just, yeah, there's people who hold this franchise so near and dear that when things go really against what they wanted and believed in, you know, uh, that hurts and it makes people, and I think that makes people more critical of the movie than they would have otherwise have been. Absolutely. Again, there's definitely issues with the movie and there's flaws and stuff like that, but I think because of that, that feeling when you came out of being, dis, you know, disappointed in that sort of aspect just makes you want to like take down the entire movie so then a quick yay or nay should they have renewed kathleen kennedy or not i'll say yay and i say i'll say yay i say yay because let her finish episode nine i i think it's not fair to judge the trilogy without the last episode because episode nine could tie in the last jedi and it could be amazing all of a sudden yeah like it's it's like kind of reading half a book and being like i don't like where this this plot has went without resolving yeah. the plot um i mean yeah it's it's like without knowing like you kind of said you told me before i you know when empire strikes first came back a lot of people didn't like it because lots of, of people didn't the way like it, it ended we just didn't have social media to do what yeah. it does today now, but now it's viewed as one of the greatest of all time i'm not saying last jedi is going to be viewed as one of the greatest no. stars movies of all time it won't but no. i feel in the context of the whole overall thing i i think it might you know be might, viewed better yes with exactly. time it needs age like a fine wine and you need the ending yeah you know it's more like middle act the first one felt more standalone this one is standalone, but at the same time, it really feels more like a middle act. Okay, so now we've got um, The Mandalorian. The announcement, they finally named it. It's called The Mandalorian um, for the live-action TV show. John Favreau producing. Um, we've got Dave Filoni directing the pilot. We've got Bryce ha- uh, Howard doing one of the directing one of the episodes. We've got uh, the guy from Thor Ragnarok, um, uh, Taika Waititi. Yeah. Like, they're getting in some huge directors those for first, this. Just for people like for those first two, what were the ones that they worked on? The the, the first couple directors, do you remember? Uh, so Dave Filoni did all of the Clone Wars, yep. directed all of the animated series, the Clone Wars, as well as Rebels, um, mm-hmm. except for the final season because he was developing this show, um, which is Resistance, yeah. and working on the directing. But I think they're setting Dave Filoni up direct the pilot of the Mandalorian. If you do a great job, we give you a movie later on. Ooh, could be. I, I think a lot of people would be interested. In, I've heard people say like that's something they want to take over for Kathleen Kennedy. I would love that, but he's so, not a producer. Yeah, he's a director and a writer. Yeah. so that'll never happen. But it'd be nice to see him. You know, I know a lot of people are very happy to see him get more influence and more you know creative control and stuff like that of various things. Absolutely, um, but the Mandalorian. This opens up so many cool things. That picture. I looked at it and I went, okay, lone gunslinger. I got Ronin vibes. Outer yeah, Edge, yeah. absolutely. Um, like Ronin from Stargate Atlantis, right? Or just Ronin from like the, the you know, Japanese sort oh. of like thing. Like the Ronin, the, the wandering warrior, like okay. there's you know, gunslinger. All the same thing. That was just the first word that kind of jumped into my head. Yeah, and I mean, in a Star Wars universe, they could bring back Cad Bane, like as a bounty hunter, mm-hmm. and he could fight this guy. They could bring back all those canon things that we love. Um, and Gengar, you, yeah, um, you can do anything in this show. Yeah, it's going to be a ten-hour movie. IG eighty-eight. Yeah, <laughs> it's going to be a ten-hour movie, like ten episodes of an hour each. So we get a ten-hour Star Wars movie where they can actually yeah. flush out characters. They can get deep, knee deep into things. I'm so excited. I, about I'm this. super excited about this. I like that they they're based kind of seem like they're picking a character that's like not Boba Fett, not that was a real any related to anything, so they can do whatever they want. Because mm-hmm. I always loved one of the things I loved about Star Wars is the universe is huge, right? There's so much you can explore, and the movies tend to have a very narrow window of it. Yeah. So the more this lets them, especially the TV series, you know, it doesn't have to be quite as, like, narratively tied down and stuff like that, or, like, streamlined. They can go all over the place and see all these cool worlds and peoples, and, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about this, especially just as a, he's not really tied down to anything. 
He can do whatever. I he would, doesn't have, you know. All and and I would love to see them, like, be on different worlds that we haven't mm -hmm. seen. I, mm -hmm. I'm tired of seeing the same old thing, like you said. Mm -hmm. I want to meet new species. I want to see new, like, I want to see what the Outer Rim was doing while all of this Empire mm -hmm. Rebellion thing is happening. Um, I'm not sure when it's set. Um, I haven't heard anything yet, but I'm guessing maybe probably after Return of the Jedi, but before The Force Awakens. Uh, that's probably likely. Because that's the least explored area. Yeah, and they could do a lot with it, because there's not a lot. Other, uh, there's a handful of books, but other than that, there's not a lot really there yet. Uh, but no, I'm, I'm quite excited for this. There's, it has so much potential, you know? And it's, I think in part because it's not a movie too. Like, movies, like you get your hour and a half, and if you don't like what they did with it, you know... Like, look at Last Jedi, your SOL, where this, there's more room to develop things and run with ideas. Well, then, five years ago, I wouldn't have thought of a TV show like this being good, but then I see Game of Thrones. Yeah. Then I see they're doing it so well. They're, we're in the age of, like, good, like, solid TV shows that aren't just, like, episode of the week and all that. And I know I'm going out on a limb here, but I think this has the chance of being the best thing Star Wars has ever put out. I Ooh, mean, bold statement. Yeah, it has the chance. I'm not saying it will, yeah. but this has the chance um, because of all the talent they've brought in. Um, I've, got, I've got high hopes. I'm trying to keep my expectations lowered yeah. because, you know, it can never, once you get it too high, you can never meet those expectations. But there's so much they could do with it. I think that's what's exciting because you just, you don't, you don't know, right? Like, there's so much that they can do. And it's kind of like when um, Force Awakens came out, like, you just, that feeling of excitement, you know, where you're like, I don't know what they're going to do with this. Like, what are they going to do? What's going to happen? Where is everybody, you know? So, segueing into the next part, I want to preface this by saying these are not spoilers, but they could come true for Episode 9. But with J.J. Abrams and the way that he teases us on movies, like, he is a master manipulator. He tweets things out that have nothing to do with the movie. He wants to get us talking in all the different directions for the next year. And be so amped up. So rumors are going to be leaking every week. But these two I found really, really interesting because they can they basically are about two of my favorite Star Wars characters. The fact that Emperor Palpatine may return in Episode Nine, and the fact that we might see Anakin Skywalker in Episode Nine. Um, the rumor was Anakin and Luke are going to have a talking sequence as Force Ghosts together. And the rumor was just that Palpatine will be in Episode Nine, but they don't say how, where, or why. Didn't they mention something like a hologram, or he'd be in a hologram form, or something? So it might be like Force Ghost. Even? No. Yeah. Oh, was it Force Ghost? They I said thought, oh, okay. Force I thought I Ghost. Say like he had a uh, something like a, a recording or something. No, for okay. for Anakin, it was Force Ghost discussion between sorry, him uh, and Luke. I'm trying, but Palpatine. Sorry. Palpatine. I didn't read anything other okay. than he might be in the movie. Okay. And you're right. It could just be a hologram, and that's how he wants to tease us. Yeah. Just quick, quick aside. Do you think part of like Abrams teasing all this stuff about all these different things kind of almost led in a little bit to, to um, the Last Jedi backlash? Just oh yeah. He, he there's all the speculations. So everybody's speculating, and then when they don't, people get, don't get the answers that they're wanting or thinking or not getting the answers. It uh, it makes it even more blows know. up in your face. Yeah, I didn't like to think of that, but that's kind of funny. In, in any event, because I, I would love to see Anakin in Episode Nine. Mm -hmm. I want to see Anakin Force Ghost. Um, Palpatine. I don't really think I want to see him come back. No. Um, I think Palpatine's story was perfect at the end of Re Return of the Jedi. Mm -hmm. um, I don't care how they do Snoke if Snoke comes back, because they cut Darth Maul in half and he came back. If, ah, did it, yeah. But I don't think it's needed. I think Kylo can be the big baddie for Episode mm -hmm. 9. Yeah, I do hope they do Hux a bit more justice. Oh, Hux. That was the my biggest thing, was Hux was so poorly used in Last Jedi. I, I totally agree. That was one of my biggest things where I was like, I liked Hux the first one. Like, I he loved was cool, him. like, you know, but... Yeah. You know. They better bring him back to where he was, and he's an actual foe for Kylo Ren. Yeah. And wouldn't it be cool if uh, Hux went to the Resistance because he hated the way that Kylo Ren was treating yeah. him? Like, the way they did in yeah. Rebels with that other character? Yeah. I mean, again, I, I said for 9 because I think it's going to make things in 8 different. Mm -hmm. Especially if they do a bunch of stuff like Luke Force Ghost. The way he, he died there, he could, you know, they might have more... I don't know. It may, in, in retrospect, it might make it even better. Oh, yeah. I mean, and they set it up that Luke can touch people because they showed Yoda knocking Luke on the head uh, yeah. in, in Episode 8. So now we know that Force Ghost can interact with the real world. Mm -hmm. He caused lightning to hit that tree. So Luke could come out and do some serious cool stuff in 9. Also, this sets up a perfect crossover of Star Wars and Ghostbusters. 
That's right? hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's super funny. So that was kind of what we wanted to chat about today, Star Wars. Um, if you guys want to see something else, you can put it in the comments. Give us an idea for a uh, topic, and we'll use it as long as it's good. I mean, if you tell us to do a topic on French fries, we're probably not going to do it. But if you give us a great topic to talk about, we want to talk about nerd stuff. It's going to have 30 minutes of us just eating various French fries. No commentary. Yeah, no just, commentary. Just sounds, if someone yeah. actually you know, suggested that, it's just going to be like... Dipping in gravy or ketchup, the different noises? Yeah. 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 So, for Mike and Jeff, um, I'd like to say thank you for listening in. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks for spending your time with us. Uh, this is the Nerds Lunch Podcast. And remember, everybody, nerds rule the world. Thank you.